In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use gobos uh, combined with spotlights to actually create naturalistic shadows of forests and moving leaves on characters and environments. You can use this for all other kinds of things too, like projectors or you know screens shining on people's faces, all kinds of stuff like that. But I like to use it in forests. I used it extensively in this National Geographic animation. The gobos weren't moving or animated as much because I found it a bit distracting, but they did add tons of variation in the lighting all through the forest. So a lot of that, those shadows and the bright spots and the dark spots are actually achieved because of the technique I'm about to show you. This scene here is a really good example of using gobos in front of lights to create a stenciled leafy pattern on this girl character as she's sitting here in the forest. Not only am I using the templates, the stencils in front of the camera to create moving leaves, I'm also using them in front of lights to create moving shadows. I do use this method all the time, and here's the shot that I'm going to be making that you'll see. It's really basic, but it really does capture the general idea. So let's get started. Okay, so for this particular example, I put together a really basic little scene here with three square gray walls, uh, an ambient, a bluish tinted ambient light, and then a yellow tinted point light, which I positioned till it looked okay. The uh, next thing I did is brought in a character, a little rabbit character that could sit in the frame and just give us some context. I'm not really sure if you guys care about how I put it together. If you do, just let me know. I can show you the whole video. But really, I wanted to focus on the using of the gobo and creating atmosphere using animated gobos. So uh, let's get started on that. Okay, so over the years of all my stuff I've been working on, I've created a lot of little libraries of plants. And these I, these I actually render out of Maya using some of their just their stack stock paint effects. So I have like stock footage effects and there's stuff that you can buy too, um, but not for the stuff I'm, I'm looking for. So I've got grass plants and paint effects that I've done. And I actually use these a lot to help me with casting shadows, like creating some really nice, a nice gobo for like forests and things like that. Uh, so let's have a look here. I think what I'm looking for is we can do an oak branch. So we've got a really nice oak branch sequence. And I make them really long. There's a way in Maya to actually make them loop. Uh, let's see what our frame rate is of this project. Uh, you can make them loop, um, make your paint effects physics loop. It is I, I haven't figured out how, quite how to do that, but it, it's really actually great for, it's really great for creating like gobos like this because you can get things to loop. So let's just take a look at what this is. This is a loop of a plant blowing in the wind, essentially. Let me see if I can get it to play back. The thing that was a little problematic, which I still haven't figured out how to stop, is some of the leaves flicker really weirdly. And that's something I have to work on to actually, because it, it's really distracting. Uh, it looks really bad if the leaves are really close. You see these are jumping ba around back and forth. But as an actual gobo, it can actually work really well. So let's turn everybody back on. And I will get this guy material to cast shadows. It's going to take a second. And now with this, we'll pull it back. We're gonna pull it way out of the scene and we're gonna change the lighting a little bit. Maybe what we'll do is let's start by creating a spotlight. Okay, so new uh, light and we'll create a spotlight. I usually use spotlights for this kind of thing. And we'll just put it at 50 for now and the cone angle will make it one, I don't know, let's just go 120. Feather, fine, radius. I guess this is all fine. We can have full off or none. It's really, really depends. I'm gonna go start with none. Um, so you can see the light right there. Let's go to custom. So you can see it's like blowing out the scene. We'll balance this out. So we're gonna reduce the point light that we have filling the scene up. We'll modify them both so that they actually work with each other nicely. Okay, so the first thing to do is we're gonna pull this guy back. Let's reduce that angle. The cone angle is way too big. I was getting a little out of control. So there you can see that right there. So let's just try to create uh, a bit of a forest feeling, okay? So let's bring this light up. And bring it way up, and back, and up. And we will continue, we'll give it a slight, we could mirror the angle that we have or just do something totally different. Um, let's go and keep coming up like this. So we can, I mean, to me, it, all, it already kind of looks cool. Um, just having some shadows in there really makes a huge difference. And it does make 
I mean, a lot of the time when I bring artwork in, it really doesn't look that good initially. Uh, I, I paint stuff in After Effects or in Photoshop, and it's hard to look at because it's not, when I'm doing it, it's not really designed to look good until it's it's been composited. So it's hard to look at, and it's really hard if you have a client. It, it can make them nervous because you're really, you know, it doesn't look that good, so... Okay, here we go. Cone angle. Let's we'll reduce that even more. I just want to have that nice and focused for this specific scene. And I think I'll probably pull it off to the side just a bit. We may even use more than one just to fill the set. I usually use more than one when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So what we can do now is so we have that light in position. So we've got this. We've got the oak branch here. Uh, there it is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to parent that to my spotlight. And I better name this one. So we'll call this spot 01. And I'm going to just parent it right here. Donk. Okay. And then now what I can do is I can just zero out the position of this light, uh, or sorry, of this object. And that will line it up directly to the center of the spotlight. And then from there, I go to its rotation values and I zero those out. And that's going to orient the, the layer to the light itself. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll pull it away from the spotlight. There we go. And you're seeing, you're starting to see that it's being lit by the spotlight. Uh, the other thing I need to do is I really need to reduce the, the shadow diffusion uh, here on the spotlight because it's going to make my gobo too blurry because it's so close to the light. So it's really important to adjust this down if you're using objects that are far away from a surface because they'll just look like a big blur, which could be nice, but really I want this to feel like there's forest light coming through. Okay, so that's working okay. I might have to blur it more just because of the nature of that flickery that flickery problem with the with the leaves which is okay if things are blurry enough it's not a problem so i've got this like branch there is you can already see some nice movements happening but it doesn't quite feel like a forest there's you know there's only one branch there so what i like to do is let's just uh, we'll go into the custom view again what i usually do is i'll create a, a more of a variety here like i'm going to fill this up so I can create a nested composition here. So we'll just go control, control, uh, control C, I think. Okay, oak branch. And we're just going to call this like leafy gobo 01. Now we'll go in here and we have this composition. I think this is, what is it? It's 2000 by 2000. That's more than big enough, really. So now what I can do is I can either use this same one, but I do have multiple branches that I've made. Uh, let's just, we can grab oak branch B. So this gives me different varieties. Uh, 23976, just changing its import. And I'll add this one in too. There we go. And rotate it a bit. And bas basically, I mean, so then I can duplicate this one. Bring it over here. And give it a little rotation. There we go. We'll just gradually fill this up. And we can have multiple levels of this too. So I'll have this one. And then I, I'm going to import one more oak branch. Uh, I have this oak branch A. And I also have, let's bring in leafy. I like, you know, I got lots. And we will do control. Oh, so I will just go control alt C. And so I'm gonna paste my my two attributes, control alt V. There that should have there we go. Twenty three nine seven six twenty three. Okay. So one more oak branch here. So there's that one there. Now it's nice to you you I mean you don't wanna like cluster it up so much that it's a big old mess. This leafy branch will probably is probably too dense. Uh, but maybe it'll be good for a corner or something. And we can also reduce the opacity of it. So it's more like a further away branch. So you can create a little bit of depth in your gobo. Let's go back to comp one. Um, there we go. That's refreshed. But you see how it's created this weird hole. That's okay. So we can scale this one up or scale it down. Just see how it's filling the frame. Okay. And we what we can also do is we can add multiples, which is really fun. So we have this one. And then, so let's let's add another one. I'm just duplicating it. And we'll push this one forward a little bit. And we'll scale it up and rotate it so it's not identical. There we go. And we can also slide its time over. So because it's animated, we want it to have a different a different feeling to it, different movement. Okay. And then, you know, we can add one more. And this one will pull further back, closer to the light. So that's going to create bigger shadows. And then bring it down a little bit so it's all filling the frame nicely. 
and we'll rotate it as well. Maybe let's we'll go to counterclockwise. Okay, it gets starts getting a bit slow because I've got so many so many things going on here. But I really want to make sure I don't have any dead spots, which I do. So if we go into the camera and have a look. Mm, come on. Because we're at full resolution. Let's go down to half. So we've got dead spots. So I can literally, let's move this around until we find the spot. I'm going to reduce the size of this one too. So you can see it, it gets hard to follow a little bit, but I kind of know what I'm doing to some degree here. There we go. So now let's just render this back a little bit and have a look at how it feels. We could probably maybe do, uh, let's see the gobo. There's a lot there, but you know what? I could probably take this leafy guy and do one more. Let's duplicate it. And I'm going to just rotate it over here. Just fill up this middle a little bit. Maybe I'll scale them up. And I'm going to drop its trans its opacity just a touch. Okay. And that should sort of fill up the middle of the bit. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a start. Those are like pure shadows. The next thing we can do with these is let's play with the transmission of, of them a bit. So right now we're just casting uh, a solid shadow. So let's just let's just actually we'll keep we'll look at the strongest object. Let's increase their light transmission to fifty percent and let's see what happens. What should start happening is we should start getting color uh, coming in on this uh, on that with that transmission option. So let's, I'm just copy and paste that value to all of them. And what we'll start getting is, I think, I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's now a slightly greenish hue to everything. If we put that transmission to 100, so let's just see what that does. Uh, th there should be a pretty significant color change. It's a, bit, it's a bit blurry, but you can see that there's colors now in the scene. So let's just, uh, I'll take a picture of this, and then let's put our transmission to zero. I'm sorry, it's probably annoying for everyone who knows all this stuff already. So if we just compare these two, you can see that there's like green present in the scene and a little more red in spots. And that can be that can be really nice actually. That can really help with your with your color palette just to create some irregular colors. So let's just I'm just gonna paste that for now because I kinda like that feeling. And I'm gonna render out like just a few seconds of that of this at half resolution. Okay, so you can see here. You can kind of see the feel that's happening. Even with those leaves that were really flickery and not looking good, it looks perfect for for leafy shadows because leaves do move, can really flutter in the wind. So I feel like that, that looks really nice. And you, you know, you can get a mixture of, of higher detail shadows that are coming across, across nice and sharp and then really nice blurred out shadows that feel like they're higher in the trees. So, you know, you can really refine this and make it work really nicely. I, I guess the next step would be is to balance out the spotlight better with the point light so let's just adjust these and the ambient light as well. Um, that that this little rabbit guy is getting awfully blown out. So let's go to our point light, and I'm going to reduce the color, push the color a little bit whiter, um, so it's not so yellow, and we'll just bring down its intensity to 150, and that should give us a little bit of a nicer feel. So it's not so blown out, and now we're really getting some more of the colors coming through in the leaf patterns. There's a little more green coming in. I suppose if the background was really, really white, you'd really see it. Now this effect, once you're dealing, the reason I did it in this white box or this gray box is because once you do this effect on a very um, painted background, it really starts to become quite subtle. And I'm gonna show some clips of what that looks like. Um, but you can really see, like it, it can build a lot of atmosphere and ambience in your actual scenes and bring a whole other dimension of life to an otherwise static painting. So that's an example of how to set up a basic goal, but you can use anything. You can use grass, you can use like uh, fire, you can use smoke, you can use anything you want uh, to do this. You could use stained glass windows. Um, you could use footage of anything and make a projector and it works really well. Okay, so here is the scene rendered out. You can see all the leaves and the shadows are moving quite nicely. I know it's not as glorious as it could be, but I hope it helps you understand the idea and really see the potential of how this could help your projects and create greater immersion in your animated scenes and environments. Thanks a lot for watching and thank you to all of our subscribers.